What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell. Today we have a very special treat with us for our performing arts lovers, for our theater art goers. We have Dr. Jane Chu, who is the CEO and president of the Kaufman Center for Performing Arts. Welcome, Dr. Chu. Well, thanks for letting me join you today, Glenn. Uh, the pleasure is all mine. I'd like to just jump right in the interview. When I was doing my research and reading background information about you for this interview, I came across an interesting fact. You have a background in piano performance. I do. I was trained originally as an artist, and uh, that has helped me a lot to be able to understand the arts. Wonderful. Do you have a favorite piano composition? Oh, I like a lot of different ones. I love to listen to any, any piano compositions, but the ones that I enjoy playing uh, are usually classical music, Bach and Beethoven. Wow. What's up, Kansas City? Why don't you give our viewers a little bit more information about you as far as your academic background, where you grew up? Well, I have a background in the arts and uh, music especially. That's what I majored in in college. But I also have a business degree from Rockhurst University. And then I have a doctorate in uh, philanthropic studies from Indiana University. And so that kind of training has been helpful in the job that I'm in because it uses all of the training from the arts to business and also philanthropy. We love arts here at What's Up Kansas City. Can you tell us a little bit of why the focus on uh, philanthropy and business management versus piano performing? Is there it's, really it's really everything all together uh, because a lot of operating the Kaufman Center for the Performing Arts involves understanding the business of doing it. Everything from the utilities to uh, uh, making sure that everybody who attends a performance at the Kaufman Center is comfortable and all of the operational features. But at the same time, we're here to enjoy a whole diverse array of music and performances and dance and all kinds of other opportunities in the center. So we, understanding the arts is a, a key piece of this, of course. And then there are people who have been so generous to the Kaufman Center for the Performing Arts, making donations and giving. We have a community tickets fund where sometimes uh, not everybody can afford to buy a ticket, but we are able to help subsidize low-income families because we want them to have opportunities to come to the Kaufman Center as well, and children. So having that, we uh, raise money, and people have been de generous to that. So understanding philanthropy and what people do to give to, for others is also meaningful. Thank you. Again, we love the arts. So understanding the arts, raising money, making the arts accessible to the public. What in your background, Ms. Chu, can inspire our viewers? What said specifically, I'm going to go for the CEO job, and I'm not only going to go for it, I'm going to succeed and strive at it? Well, everybody deserves to go after whatever they want to do. Nobody should ever be um, telling themselves or selling themselves short. But a combination of things uh, are helpful to me in terms of my background, not only with the arts but and the music, but my background as a person who comes from a family who uh, are Chinese. And although I was born in the United States, my parents were not, and as a teenager, my mother uh, escaped from the communists entering China in 1948. So her parents snuck her out on a train, and they didn't know if they'd ever see her again, and they never did. She never saw her parents again. And so she came and made a whole new life for herself in America, met my father, who was also Chinese. So being able to uh, get into a situation where you have, uh, where you're straddling different cultures. And by that, I don't necessarily mean uh, different, uh, it, it can be different ethnicities, it can be different um, uh, ways of talking, but it, uh, it, it may not be. It's just, may, it's just uh, getting in the middle of different ways of doing things and being. And that's very special to be in those types of settings where people are different from each other. And that's what's so great about the arts. There are so many different forms of expression and something that I may like, somebody else may not like. You know, a program at the Kaufman Center or something somebody else is programming, somebody else is not going to like it. But if you look at everything that you can have in terms of an opportunity to express yourself, the arts do that great. And because I 
straddle a bunch of different types of uh, cultures and ways of doing. I'm very comfortable in that. And just like the arts is a different, uh, very comfortable in terms of different ways of expressing ourselves. And so that's why I think this is a good match. Very comfortable. Art is definitely the universal language. I'd like to focus a little bit on the namesake of the Kaufman Center, Mariel Kaufman. Can you tell us a little bit about her? I never had the privilege of meeting her, but I know that a number of years ago when she was alive, she wanted to have a performing arts center for Kansas City. She had seen what it had done for other cities, and she said Kansas City deserved to have one too. So her daughter, um, after having that vision and that dream and passing on, her daughter, Julia Irene Kaufman, who is our chairman, really carried forth her mother's wish and began to set forth uh, where would we have a performing arts center? How could it be built? She ran market studies. She visited a lot of other performing arts centers and, and put in her mind what she liked about things, other centers that she saw, and what she didn't think would match here in Kansas City. And she just came with a real good vision of what she thought Kansas City could have in a performing arts center. And so she is the one that gets the credit for really making this happen and um, starting the construction, which was seven years ago. She ran uh, market studies. She tested to make sure this would be good for the community. And then uh, groundbreaking, the first time for to begin construction was in 2006. Wow, that sounds fall. exciting. So it took five years and it had been open two years ago. Yes, thank you for sharing with us some of those highlights. Uh, as far as the, the Kaufman Center, what challenges have you faced as CEO, particularly related to the Kaufman Center since its doors first opened? We wanted to make sure that we understood the building, and so we think it's a very wow. iconic building. It's very recognizable. Uh, it's not um, just a typical square building that most buildings are, so many no, people not. who drive by they know it and it's recognized as part of the skyline of Kansas City and so when we opened we wanted to make sure that we knew to, how to help people get around in the building because you can come in the building and it's it's really beautiful but not necessarily sure about where which door you're supposed to go in we have two performance halls which one is the that you're supposed to get, go in. Those are the questions that people ask when they first come in. So we needed to make sure we had trained our ushers right, uh, made people feel welcome, and so we get better and better as we go along with that. Those are the main things. We just want to make sure people feel comfortable and that it is accessible and uh, that they feel comfortable in this building. For our viewers, what's up Kansas City? Kaufman Center is a $413 million project it sits on, what is it, 285,000 square feet land right there, 16th and Broadway. A lot of artists have graced the stage in a whole lot of different genres. Music, you have classical, pop, jazz, you have contemporary ballet, dancing, you have comedy shows, Broadway productions, and more. I'm sure as you're in your role as CEO, you've had the opportunity to rub shoulders with some pretty talented people. Do you have any stories you can care to share? I think of what I like to see more than anything is um, I love seeing the audiences who come to the different shows. The, uh, artists. the artists are so great on all levels, including artists in the Kansas City area, because we've got some folks, we've got some really good artists here in this Kansas City area. And so local, national, and international. And then based on what we talked about before, based on the fact that some people like this artist and others like that artist, um, depending on who the artist is who's performing, it also makes the audience look different when they come to. Sometimes we see audiences come for one specific artist and a completely different audience for another artist. And that is actually what is more satisfying to me than anything because all of the artists have been exceptionally good and I've just been thrilled about all of them. And, but what's very special is still, after two years, people coming in saying, I've never been in this building before until tonight or this afternoon, and I'm coming because of this artist. And I love that. I just love that because it means more and more people have an opportunity to feel comfortable in the building. 
where do you envision the Kaufman Center for Performing Arts just opening its doors September of 2011, having a role in the life of young artists, performing artists, particularly in the Kansas City community? Well, we are just starting on that, and we have launched a program in partnership with Sprint Center as well as the Grammy Museum in Los Angeles. And what it does is it brings together uh, kids and they have to be in the older high school area or early young adults like uh, early college age and they have to love composing music. Now uh, many times they have, there are many programs where people learn how to play their instrument really well or they take music lessons. Those are fantastic. I took music lessons and many people did. I did too. Very good. But there aren't as many uh, classes or uh, seminars or workshops for kids who get to compose. You know, we learn how to play the instrument but not always get to compose. And America has been leading the way for many generations on creating new musical forms for the world, for many of them. But lately, like about the last generation or so, uh, according to the Grammy Museum in Los Angeles, the, the last real uh, recognized art form that has been created in America is hip hop which is fine, but there hasn't been enough since then to create. So one of the things we wanted to start, and we have started it for two summers, is to bring together kids, and they have to audition, not necessarily on their instrument, but they have to show that they have this passion for creating music. And they audition, and if they get in, uh, they are they get to learn how to create music together as a group, and then we bring in Grammy artists to awesome. work with them as mentors. Now imagine if you were in jazz and somebody in jazz, you know, like a Wynton Marsalis came in and helped you, you would never forget that. It might be motivation to keep going and composing more as a kid. Definitely. And that's what we want to provide for them. So for example, the first year, uh, we did get actually into some hip hop uh, creation with some kids that we had and guess who came in? Keb Mo. And he worked with them to help work on how he creates his own hip hop. So we want to do that That's when fabulous. it's t t talking about cultivating children for the future because it's really the next generations who are going to help create the new music forms to really keep this going. And it, anywhere, even if you don't go into music professionally, you know, for a career like I have done, music, uh, arts of any kind, visual arts, performing, there's something about it that stimulates different parts of your brain and it causes you to be able to think in creative ways. So we need those kind of things to help us solve problems. What happens if we get stuck and we're working on a problem, but if we've been trained creatively to think about how to get out of it, we, we might be able to say, you know what, I'm going to think out of the box, I'm going to think of a different solution, I'm not going to be stuck. So we think we're helping kids do more than just even music. That's awesome, Ms. Chu. Where can our viewers go? Is there a website address where they can get more information about how to apply for the Grammy, is it Revolution Project? Yes, that's exactly what it's for. It's called the Grammy Museum's Music Revolution Project. Music Revolution but I would Project. go to our I would go to our website, www.kaufmancenter.org, and they can just write in and say, I heard on What's Up Kansas City something about the music composition for kids, and somebody can give them more information. That's fabulous. Now, I want to tell our viewers, our performing arts lovers, people who love to sit in the audience and watch a theater production and work, about something that you have coming up on October the 19th, Abyssinian, a gospel celebration. This is Wynton Marsalis, and this is a presentation through the Harriman Jewel series. They've done such a great job in bringing uh, a diverse range of opportunities to present. So Wynton Marsalis, who we all know and love, is just fabulous trumpet player, has composed a piece called Abyssinian Mass, and he is coming in to present this with the Jazz at Lincoln Center uh, Orchestra. This is about a 15-piece fabulous orchestra. If you've heard them play, they've been to Kansas City before, but this time on Abyssinian Mass, they're also bringing a 70-member gospel choir wow. to come in as well. And the reason it's named this is because it was named after a church called Abyssinian Baptist Church, which is located in New York City. And this church is 200 years old. Not 100, but 200 years old. So you can imagine it was formed uh, back in about 18, 
08. I believe that is their formation date. So the reason that was formed way back then is because it really was um, African Americans were experiencing racial segregation, even in the church. And this church was formed to uh, be a haven and a, pro a protest against racial segregation. And so that church has really stood for a lot in terms of um, broadening and opening up opportunities and just being a church that said, wait a minute, that simply is wrong. So Abyssinian Mass is uh, based on that church and uh, what it has been sending out in terms of the uh, joyfulness, uh, what you can do to celebrate, and it in, uh, the Mass itself includes music that's uh, gospel, it's got jazz, it's got a lot of the roots of the African American culture, but it's also a celebration of all kind music being something universal like you had just said uh, that belongs to all of us. So I would say this is going to be a great presentation and I need to commend the Harriman and Jewel for Harriman and Jewel series for bringing the Abyssinian Mass uh, with Wynton Marsalis uh, here to present it. It's going to be great. I can imagine. What's it like actually being behind the scenes on a project such as this as opposed to buying a ticket and sitting in the audience? And there is a lot of fun, you know, if you go backstage and you see the artists getting ready, they want to do their best. Um, just think about this. Uh, an artist coming out is presenting his or her own product, which is actually him, his or himself or herself. And so um, they're busy getting ready. They're making sure that if, for example, they sing, uh, their throat is uh, moist and, you know, everything is ready for their very bre best presentation. So that's what we're seeing backstage. Is everything ready? Are the lights ready? Is the sound ready? Are, does everybody have their ticket? Is everybody comfortable on, in their chairs uh, who are ready to see the performance? So we, we do see all of the behind the scenes and we laugh because uh, you know, if you're watching a duck swimming on the water, there's the duck and it's just gliding. But behind <laughs> the scenes, the duck is paddling like crazy underwater. I could imagine. That's all the yeah. activity that's going on behind the scenes, getting ready to be able to present to the audience. Well, that show is going to take place, Abyssinian Gospel Celebration, on October 19th. They can go to your website, www.kaufmancenter.org, to get more information about yes, that. Right. I love gospel music, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Chu. Um, is there any chance that the Kaufman Center will be presenting any future uh, productions, gospel, soul, hip-hop? Indeed, there is a chance. Uh, we actively make sure that everything that we've presented has... Um, an array of things, in, including jazz, pulse, j gospel, jazz, soul, and hip hop. In the past, we've been able to bring, we just brought in um, Sweet Honey and the Rock, which is a wonderful uh, yes, gospel uh, group, and uh, some others as well. So that's what we'll actively pursue, be pursuing. Now, as far as your f personal favorite project, is there something upcoming that you're looking forward to presenting? It's really back to as long as we are able to find artists who do it well on any level, so that's one criteria, they have to be really good artists. And then the second criteria is that we cannot have just one single type of uh, genre. Mm -hmm. It really needs to be looking at the menu and saying, look, there's more things on the menu than just one type. So my favorite thing is really when I look at the menu and say, good, you know, there's a whole array of something for somebody. There's an excellence for everybody, but not just one thing for one, just not just one thing for everybody. Yes, and it is through that arts diversity where we really begin to understand each other, understand our cultures, and understand uh, the artist's message. That's right. So I'd like to thank you for being here, Mrs. Chu. Is there anything that we failed to bring up that you would like to tell our What's Up Kansas City audience? Oh, just thank you for giving me this opportunity. Yes, we thank you. We're going to have to invite Ms. Chu to come back at a later time when she has some more to share with us. What's up, Kansas City? Today we talked with Mrs. Jane Chu. We actually got a chance to meet her. She gave us a little background information about herself, about the Kaufman Center for Performing Arts. We thank you for tuning in. If you have more questions, if you want to learn more about the productions and the work at Kaufman Center for Performing Arts, don't hesitate to go to the website at www.kaufmancenter.org. Check us out online for more video at www.kansascity.net. And remember to aim high, whether you're a performing artist, a musician, whatever, the sky is the limit. Shoot for the moon. If you miss, at the very least, you'll land among the stars. Till next time, I'm your host, Glenn Brian Frizzell. I encourage you to stay safe and support the arts. C
CMG wants you to always remember. The victory we call success goes to the best prepared. When you invest in your community, you are really just investing in yourself. Thanks.